Here we have another way to think about carbon substitution patterns. And that is to think about how many carbons are bonded to the carbon we're thinking about. We call them primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary carbons. Here's an example. And you can see in this molecule that some carbons have only one bond to another carbon, some have two, some have three, and some have four. So for example, here we've got what we call a primary carbon, one bond to another carbon. But there are other carbons in this molecule, and it turns out that there are five primary carbons in this molecule. Now, if we look for carbons that have two bonds to another carbon, we can see here's a secondary carbon, and here's another one. Here we have a carbon that's got three bonds. It's a tertiary carbon. And here, a carbon with four bonds to other carbons is called a quaternary carbon. But it turns out that some of these carbons, for example, these methyl groups, may not, may not all be the same. All right? So we want to be able to identify how many chemically different carbons there are in, in this molecule. So here's the same molecule. And we know that there's only one quaternary carbon. Here it is. And we know there's only one tertiary carbon. Here it is. But now, if we look at the secondary carbons, here they are, they're actually the same. They're in the same chemical environment. They have one bond to a methyl group and one bond to a uh, tertiary carbon. Both of them are the same. And then if we look at the methyl groups themselves, of which there are five, we see that there are two sets of these methyl groups. These two methyl groups here are bonded to a secondary carbon and then a tertiary. Right, they're both the same. And these three methyl groups are bonded to a quaternary and then a tertiary. So we have two different types of methyl groups here. And it turns out that we've got one, two, three, four, five chemically different types of carbon.